This is one of my favorite little approaches into Epping Forest, just here off the top of Ollard's Grove in Loughton. A forest adventure awaits. So today we're back out in Epping Forest and it feels mighty good. This is gonna be my first like proper, proper Epping Forest walk of 2021, which is a big moment in the year. We're gonna go down to a part of the forest that I haven't recorded in a video yet. In fact, actually, not have I not recorded it in a video yet, I've only actually ever been down here once. So although I've made quite a lot of Epping Forest videos, and you can see a playlist, I'll link it below to Mapping Forest videos and I'll also link to more specific ones as well to help me navigate some of that. But amongst all of them, I think there's something like 20, I somehow managed to miss off this one particular part of Epping Forest, Honey Lane Quarters. There's a great pub down there, there's a really wonderfully picturesque thatched um, drinking fountain down there. It's a great little corner of the forest. And like I say, I've only actually been down there once and that was uh, last winter, 2020. So that's the, that's the, the principal destination, but we're gonna try and loop in some other locations, which I don't think are in other videos. And then let's wait and see how we go. We'll probably either end up back here at Loughton, Faden Boys or Epping. <laughs> or if I get really, really lost, we could end up in Chingford, but Something would have to go quite seriously wrong for that to happen, I think. And it's just actually finished raining. Well, I say finished, I think it's having a little pause in the rain. So there's a little bit of mud underfoot. I've got to be careful with my ankle because it's still not right. It's still a bit sore, a bit painful. I woke up in pain last night, but, uh, and it could rain again. This doesn't diminish the enjoyment of a walk in Epping Forest. This is one of my favorite trees of Epping Forest here. Something quite majestic and timeless about it, isn't there? And this old soul here is Dunny Shift. Epping Forest, the people's forest, London's forest. I love uh, a phrase I picked up in Mark Gorman's book, Saving the People's Forest, I think it's called. I'll put an image of it in here, where it's described as the, the Arcadia of the East End Artisan. I love that description. I've probably mangled that up. I'll put the correct quote on the screen there. But we should never take this for granted. It was saved for the people of London in the Epping Forest Act of 1878. And I've often repeated the fact that Queen Victoria declared it the People's Forest in 1882. And that did indeed take place. But what I hadn't read elsewhere until I picked up Mark Gorman's book was on that day, representatives from the Hackney Working Men's Association also spoke because they felt that the very people, the working people of the East End who had fought tirelessly for a long time to preserve and save Epping Forest as a resort for Londoners, a place of retreat, that they were being excluded from these celebrations to mark the opening of the People's Forest. Uh, it's another example of how people's history is written out over time. And I've been guilty of that as well, just mentioning the brilliant Edward North Buxton, who was the first verderer of the forest, or is it Vedera? Vedera or Verderer? I know I've pronounced that wrong in the past but forgetting the role that the working people of the East End played in preserving this forest for us to enjoy today. We should be incredibly grateful to their valiant efforts. Without that, most of this would have been built upon by now. They recently restored grazing cattle to Epping Forest. You can sometimes see them grazing out here. So we've gone, uh, we've just gone over Fairmield Road, the suspended road. And we're just closing in on North Long Hills. And I'm gonna go down, I think, to White House Plain, Hillwood, Church Plain, and then up to High Beach. And you can see Honey Lane Quarters. It's just up there.
tree there that looks as if it shows evidence of lopping. We'll talk more about lopping later as we progress. So that's the path I normally take and this is one of my favourite paths in Epping Forest down there. That eventually leads you down to Chingford Plain. It's a delightful walk. I was there last Sunday actually with my son. But uh, we want to go this way. This will take us in the direction we want to head towards High Beach and ultimately towards Honey Lane Quarters. The rain's starting to come down again very gently. Pitter pattering on the leaf canopy. In his book, London's Forest, published in, oh, I'll put the date on the screen, it's the late 19th century. I'm going to take a punt and say it was 1884. Wonderful author called Percival J. Percival. That's a name for you. Percival J. Percival. And I think that was his real name and not a pen name. He speculates that Epping Forest was once perhaps the original Lynn Din, the stockade in the woods that gives London its name. It's one of the possible interpretations of the name of London. And it's a stockade in the woods, the Lynn Din. Of course, in those days, Epping Forest was just one fragment of the great forest of Essex that stretched from the banks of the Lee to the shores of the sea. Vast tract of forest. What we see today is a tiny fragment of what was once here. And only this, as I mentioned, is here due to the efforts of the people of the East End of London and not forgetting the corporation of the city of London who preserved the forest. I love that idea that it's here in the forest that we find the origins of London. And maybe it's where we find part of the meaning to our contemporary urban life, our contemporary urban existence is out here in Epping Forest. I think it's one of the reasons that the forest was such an important place during the lockdowns and we're not out of them yet let's not forget that many people discovered Epping Forest for the first time during the lockdown I had lots of people emailing me and uh, messaging me telling me that they had uh, just discovered Epping Forest and it had been such a amazing help to them in the troubled times that we've been living through and of course there are a couple of very notable ancient earthworks in Epping Forest, Loughton Camp and Amesbury Banks. I've mentioned them both before in various videos and blog posts, I'll put links below. But they really point to the use of this, this wooded area going right back at least into, in, deep into the Iron Age, if not longer. There's a Neolithic trackway on the other side of the forest, not far from where we hope to end up today, that points to a much more distant past. I think this little crossroads here is known as Three Bridges. There's a little brook running around the edge of the path here. The forest means so many different things to so many different people. Will Ashton wrote a really wonderful book called Strange Labyrinth about Epping Forest. And I was really fortunate to interview Will on stage at the Wanstead Tap. And that's a book I highly recommend. If you want a contemporary book about Epping Forest, alongside Mark Gorman's book, get those two, you can't go far wrong. And Will picks up a lot of these themes through stories. You can see that for a lot of people the forest is actually a place of fear, a place of danger. I know I've walked here in the dark quite a bit, particularly in the winter, and for me it's a much safer place to be than walking along the roads for example. There were, the forest was once a, a haunt of bandits and outlaws and rogues. It's said that Dick Turpin had a had a cave or a camp within the banks of, was it Loughton Camp or Amesbury Banks? One of the two. That's highly plausible. The idea that Boudicca made her last stand at 
Amesbury Banks is probably slightly less likely. I know some of you strongly disagree with that, don't you? Some archaeology would be nice to, <laughs> to back that up. But of course, the forest was also a place of radicalism as well. There was the, the epic battle to save the forest that united people of all sorts of different political persuasions, which is something which is always good to see. And also the fringes of the forest were often used for great big open air meetings, all the big important issues of the day from the suffragette movement, the right to extend the franchise to all people. Remember, once upon a time, not so long ago, you had to own property to vote, not just to take a seat in parliament, but to vote. And the forest was the scene of many of the great gatherings of people from London. So Londoners, have always came out to the forest to express themselves in a variety of ways. Through the trees there, you'll hear the distant rumble of the motorcyclist's tea hut. It's a kind of famous location. I'm not going to go through there and start poking the camera around in front of them. I'm going to crack on down this beautiful little path here, and we're closing in on High Beach. This is a lovely little winding path beside the High Beach Road with the rain coming down quite heavily now on the, on the tree canopy. It's actually making it quite dark as well. It's about seven o'clock in the evening. This is the Church of the Holy Innocents at High Beach plays quite an important role in Luke Turner's book, Out of the Woods. Can't exactly remember the detail about that. I think he has a relative or a series of relatives that are buried in this churchyard here. Wow, the rain is really coming down now. This may mean I need to revise my plans for this walk. But we'll continue for a little way in that direction and we'll make our minds up as we go along, shall we? Wow, the rain's really pounding down now. I've got to be very careful with my, <laughs> with my electronic devices. But uh, High Beach is one of those parts of Epping Forest that many people believe is haunted. There is the kind of famous spot not far from me here where people, uh, they let their cars go in neutral gear and see it be dragged uphill. And their car is gonna be pulled. Oh my God, look at this. Look at that, the car is being drawn uphill. That is astonishing. The engine is turned off, that car is rolling uphill. A little bit of an optical illusion, but it's quite fun. I remember I first saw that one day when I saw people going round in their cars and doing it. And uh, we talked a little bit about that part of the forest law and the kind of haunted legends spread around High Beach. Of course, High Beach is heavily associated with the uh, peasant poet John Clare. That's not being, being, being rude, by the way, that was what he was known as. <laughs> 18th century poet who was sort of adopted by the London kind of, well, I was gonna say intelligentsia. I don't think that idea existed at that point. Wow, the rain's really heavy. And Clare ended up in an asylum here at High Beach. And then one day he just took off on an epic walk home back to where he grew up, looking for his uh, sweetheart from his youth back in his village. I think it was called Northborough in Cambridgeshire. That's a journey that the great Ian Sinclair replicated a couple of times, once for his book, Edge of the Orison, and then again for a film with uh, Andrew Cotton called By Ourselves, where John Clare was played by the great actor Toby Jones. And Andrew did the entire 80 mile walk dressed as a straw bear. Oh, 
the comedic effect, you know, when we were doing by ourselves, I was, I went into the uh, Marks and Spencers and I was chatting the kids up in Stevenage. Right. But it, it um, oof. So what, is, uh, what is the straw bear? What does it mean? That means um, a lot of things to a lot of different people. I mean, it was inspired by the Whittlesea straw bear. And, um, and certainly an image that I found in the back of Ian's impenetrable book, um, Edge of the Horizon. And when I saw that, something happened. You know? there, was a, there was a fella in a, in a bowler hat uh, attached to a straw bear by rope. And it, it really resonated. And the more I started reading uh, the John Clare poetry, the more I, these kids are up for a bit of skullduggery, the more, um, the, the, the more I kind of, I felt that it could, it could represent the, the noises, the stuff, the, <clears throat> the sounds that could have been resonating, that could have filled um, John Clare's head, like an angry swarm of bees. Sounds like they're not letting the rain get in the way of a proper party over there at the King's Oak. It's really going off in there. There's actually like a, well there was like a big swimming pool out the back of there, like a country club. I went to a, a wedding reception there once. It was actually really nice. I think you can pay just to go for a swim. I might be wrong. The King's Oak takes its name from a, a tree that was planted to commemorate King Harold who died in 1066 at the Battle of Hastings and of course has strong associations with Waltham Abbey which is uh, just below the hill here where his remains or some of his remains at least are said to be buried. You know there are those people that whenever they look into the sky every cloud is a UFO you know it's like people who see the image of Jesus in their toast for example. Well for me whenever I see a bump in a piece of open space I'm thinking burial mound. And there's loads of mounds all around here. You see these little mounds. Well, actually, although it's a little bit disappointing to discover that they're not burial mounds, they're still quite interesting. They're sandy mounds of earth and sand, earth and sand together. They were created as kind of like mounds of sandy earth that rabbits could burrow into at the time when rabbits were farmed for their meat and their fur. So there's a little cottage industry here, farming rabbits in Epping Forest at High Beach. That's uh, Epping Forest Visitor Centre there. It's a great place to go when it's open. I imagine it might be opening again from Monday, uh, from Monday the 17th of May. I would have thought it's great. They have little exhibitions there and you can pick up maps and information about the forest. It's obviously closed at the moment because A, COVID and B, um, it's about quarter past seven, maybe half past seven in the evening. So I think we need to make a change of plan. You should always be prepared to make a change of plan when you're on a walk. Anything can happen, it can lead you to do that. Right at the moment, I think I've just taken the wrong path. There you go. Well, not the wrong path, but not the path I wanted to take. So this isn't the right weather to take you down to Honey Lane Quarters. Not that I had visions of a glorious early summer sunset, but uh, certainly a grim, wet, rainy day. It's very hard for me to film in this weather as well. So I'm gonna save that for another day. I didn't wanna blow it on a murky evening when it's basically nearly dark. Although well, <laughs> it does sort of describe the weather when I first went there. No, I think it was quite a nice sort of crisp uh, winter sunset. So we'll save Honey Lane Quarters for another video, which could be a, another excuse to make yet another Epping Forest video. I reckon I've got quite a few more to go. I'm sure some of you who know the forest, like the back of your hands already have spotted a number of places I've never been. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to head down back to Loughton. I did sort of half predicted that, didn't I? Leaving Loughton, I thought maybe we'll end up back in Loughton. I did see that as one of the possibilities of today. Every walk has a story and the walk writes its own story. 
the walk walks you sometimes and you just have to go with the flow. We'll do something a little bit different today. I normally just go down there, cross the road, go around the edge of Loughton Camp and down through Kate's Cellar. But let's take this path here. It's a really great path and I don't take it as often as I used to. I used to walk along here in my early days in the forest, but let's, uh, let's go somewhere a little bit different today. Wow, listen to that rain coming down now again. running through Kate's cellar. So it looks like it was a good decision to not push on for Honey Lane Quarters because the rain's got really heavy once again. Now I'm here beneath Loughton Camp really. There's this wonderful drop here. Look at that. Where the uh, little brook running down through there. Not Loughton Brook but something that feeds into it at some point. It's quite dramatic here under the trees with the, with the rain pouring down. I'm actually having to use my phone <laughs> as a torch to give me some light because the light's just gone completely. Oh, can you hear that? It's uh, really easy to lose your bearings in the forest on the paths because they don't necessarily follow what you might think is a logical route. Let's get down through this really gnarly bit before I start taking my eye off the ball and talking to camera. Really muddy, really muddy here. Oh God, this has got slipping written all over it, hasn't it? So it would be so easy to lose your bearings in the forest. Look at this water running down here. The, the way the paths kind of zigzag and they seem to go back up the hill if you're trying to go down the hill and you're cutting across little uh, river valleys, they're not really river valleys but little undulations carved out by the by the brooks. At the moment I'm going uphill whereas I feel like I should be going downhill. Now with my sense of direction it's entirely plausible that I would go in the wrong direction. However, because I know my sense of direction is so rubbish, I rely on the compass on my phone. Without that, I'd probably be going back to High Beach. <laughs> That's hilarious. Just as I was saying that, I could see some lights ahead. I thought that looks like a Looks like a pub. There's no pub down the bottom here. And I had gone back up the hill <laughs> to that roundabout. Where is it? The owl is up there, that pub. I've actually done that before. It's because I took a different path. There you go. Just goes to show the dangers of walking on a different path. <laughs> uh, well, you know, this is what it's like when I go, <laughs> when I go for a walk anyway. See, adventure's just around the corner. And you've got my navigational skills. We're about to come out onto the streets of Loughton, eventually slightly delayed by my <laughs> lack of directional sense and getting lost and all that. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on that beguiling walk in Epping Forest. It just goes to show any walk in Epping Forest is latent with possibilities, isn't it? It's been fantastic to have you along. As I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Although I do think, I think we might be ready for the wandle now. I think the ankle passed an all important test today. It's a bit sore, but it did the job. Got up and down those hills, jumped over little rivers. Well, I didn't really jump, I sort of hobbled over them, but I think we're ready for the wandle trail. Mm -hmm.